Well, this PCB experiment didn't go as planned. Here's a component experimenting graveyard, and my first attempt at assembling one of these. On this second attempt, I've got all kinds of extra swapped parts, cut tracks, and resistors, capacitors added on front and back. But it does work, so let's see what I'm up to with this project sponsored by PCB Way. This is my attempt at trying to get this audio octave generating transformer and diodes and sometimes other components off of the breadboard and into a more stable experimenting platform as I continue developing this eventually what will be a guitar octave fuzz effect. I won't be doing any guitar demoing today, we're just looking at the circuit itself. And on breadboards, of course, any DuPont wires can become loose or intermittent over time. And sometimes if you have components, especially resistors that you buy on AliExpress, the leads are very thin and they might be really loose in a breadboard. So one day it works, another day something gets slightly nudged and you've got to go tapping on every component and see if the signal comes back. And this is an ongoing project, and it's meant to be integrated with other circuit blocks both before and after it. So it was time to just get it more stable. And another reason I wanted it on a circuit board, up until now, I've been driving this transformer with an ideal sine wave generator with a low output impedance, so it can easily drive this. And likewise, the output signal I was feeding usually straight into an audio amplifier, so it has an ideal high input impedance and it won't load this circuit down. But if I'm going to put other circuit blocks into and out of this, I thought it would be a good idea to put a hardware wrapper around this transformer and diode octave generating circuit block so I can use this emitter follower as an input buffer and it will help give some drive strength for this transformer without necessarily having any loading effect on whatever signal is coming in. And the output can go to this op-amp circuit with gain and have a relatively low output impedance to drive either another circuit block or some length of cabling. And the main octave doubling circuit can hopefully easily adapt into other projects. So reviewing the whole project concept, I'll turn off that green trace. The blue sine wave on the top is our incoming signal generator 1 kilohertz sine wave. I have it set for 1 volt peak to peak and there's no DC offset so ground is in the center. The scale here is not the same on both channels so I'm going to make them the same. 500 millivolts per division. So if I have the audio signal coming into a transformer, then on the output there's a center tap that I connect to ground, and then each end of the transformer goes through a series diode, so it looks like this. And if we have a 1 kilohertz sine wave coming in with a ground on the center tap, we're taking both positive and negative peaks of the sine wave, full wave rectifying it so we get a bunch of positive only peaks. And that's what we're seeing on this bottom trace. Ground is at the bottom of the waveform and we just have these positive peaks instead of alternating positive and negative. So the frequency of that signal ends up being double this one. So we create an audio octave up effect. And this works better when you have a more pure sine wave. If you have a guitar signal, you're not always going to get an octave up, but when you have individual notes and when they get more clean and quiet as they fade out, they become more like a sine wave and you start hearing the octave effect. So that's the whole point of the long-term project, to create that sort of guitar effect. Now if I turn on the green trace, this has the same 500 millivolt per division scale. Now we can see here it's 2 kilohertz. That's the output of the circuit, and because it's going through a series DC block capacitor, the ground reference is in the center again, like the input, so we just have 
an audio waveform with no DC offset the way we have a DC offset in the middle of the circuit. So I just have a six pin header for experimenting purposes, as well as later if I incorporate this in a project, I can just have this all in an enclosure and just connect wiring between circuit boards. So this is nine volts and ground for power and an audio in with ground and an audio out with ground. The audio in will go through a DC block capacitor and we're going to this emitter follower so now that we stripped off the DC bias, if there was one, we need to re-bias this up about halfway between 9 volts and ground so that the audio signal does not get clipped, being too close to one of the power rails. So we bring this up to a V-ref of about 4.5 volts, and now the audio signal can swing above and below 4.5 volts center and go toward ground and toward 9 volts. I'm generating the reference voltage just with a couple of 15k resistors across the power supply as a voltage divider, filter capacitor on that, and then I'm buffering it with a spare op amp on the dual op amp chip to give a low impedance 4.5 volts because I'm using V-ref to bias up in a couple of different locations. And I found just trying to use two resistors with the filter capacitor like a lot of circuits do, it was interfering with this particular circuit. And likewise, we don't want to connect that op amp output directly here and swamp out our signal, so we just connect it through a series resistor and that will provide the 4.5 volt level shift and the AC signal can still ride on that bias. I started out trying to use a higher value around 510k. Sometimes circuits can get away with one meg just to provide a DC bias, but it just wasn't working well with this circuit. So partly through experimenting, I found 100k worked well. And to keep the bill materials simplified, I just used the same 100k on the op amp. And on the op amp, I'm using 15k to set gain. That's why I used a couple of 15Ks here to get the 4.5 volts instead of choosing some other value that's not yet in the circuit. And then I have an extra part in the bomb, so it makes it easier. So with this signal coming in and getting buffered, now this transistor can drive this transformer winding, which has an impedance around 600 ohms, and it won't be loading down and impacting the original signal. And then I have a potentiometer to ground as a level control going into a non-inverting op amp with gain. So the gain is fixed at 1 plus 15k divided by 1k, so a gain of 16. Then the output of that again removes any DC offsets so the signal can go to the final output. And we have a level control again for the overall circuit, so we can turn the signal completely down to ground or have it full strength. So now we can look at the circuit working on the scope and see why we wanted this input level control going into this op amp and how we can use the output level control. I could have just set the potentiometer somewhere in this gain network and controlled the gain itself, but because it's non-inverting, the minimum gain on this op-amp circuit is 1. So doing it this way, I get a chance to actually attenuate the signal if it's, for some reason, too large in amplitude. So again, we have our input sine wave, 1 kilohertz, 1 volt peak to peak, then directly out of the octave generating transformer and diodes, we have twice the frequency, 2 kilohertz, and it's biased up above ground because of the center tap on the transformer. But because we're going through a transformer, there's some losses in the first place. And then going through the diodes, just the nature of that network, we have a lower signal level and we want to amplify it. When it comes to a guitar effect, it's good to be able to have the ability to get unity gain, if not be able to slightly amplify compared to the original signal, so we don't lose signal level. And if there's losses elsewhere in the signal chain, we can just boost a little bit here and get the overall final volume we want. So turning on the final output trace, I have the potentiometer for the overall output set to max. So if I adjust that 
pot, as if I'm turning down the final output signal level, I can get that all the way to a flat line ground. But I'll put it back to max output. And now being set unity gain against the input signal, if I adjust this level pot going into the fixed gain op amp, I can turn that pot all the way to ground again, eliminating the signal altogether. Or if I go to maximum, so I'm letting the op amp do its gain of 15 plus 1, I can get way more than unity gain until I start clipping. I'm going to turn down this vertical scale so I can keep going. So I'm not clipping with 1 volt peak to peak in. If I go to 2 volts peak to peak in, suddenly I'm clipping. So that's why I want the ability to adjust the signal level going into the op amp itself. And I can adjust things so I can get unity gain again. So now I have a nicely buffered octave generating circuit on a stable PCB. At least it will be stable when I permanently swap out all of these experimental parts. So lots more experimenting to come.